I'm interested in the cells that cause inflammation in your body. Um, and um, there's increasing evidence that uh, inflammation is involved in Parkinson's disease. So today I'm going to talk to you about uh, the particular immune cells that you get in the brain, which are called microglia, and they're the sort of brain's vacuum cleaners, professional cleaners that go around keeping everything nice and tidy. And they're shown here in green. Um, but before I go any further, let me um, show you a slightly disturbing image of my teenage son um, in his bedroom. Um, so uh, I find this quite a nice analogy for what I'm going to talk about. Um, and I'll just leave that hanging in your brains there um, until the end of the talk. And then we'll come back to it and see if you've uh, uh, got the same analogy that I think. So a little bit of um, school biology now. Um, so you will have learnt uh, years ago about phagocytes that go around eating things. Um, and in the body, we have different types of phagocytes, but the most professional one is called the macrophage. Um, and you will have probably learnt about it at school um, as a cell that can eat bacteria when you have a, an infection of bacteria. Um, but it's not only involved in infections. In fact, its main role is just to keep your, the tissues of the body nice and clean and tidy. And so you have macrophages in all the tissues of your body, um, and most of the time they are just clearing up bits of debris, dead cells, any protein junk that happens to be around that needs to be tidied up to keep the other cells in those organs happy. Um, and the way that they will do it is they will take these bits of debris um, up in by phagocytosis, that's eating, um, and uh, it will form a phagosome with this debris in it. Um, and then that will uh, fuse with uh, what's called a lysosome inside the cell that's full of um, enzymes and chemicals that will um, digest, just pretty much similarly to your, in your stomach, to digest the contents of that phagosome um, until they're all broken down and then they can be safely um, spat out of the cell at the other end. If that process goes well, then everything in your body is kept nice and clean and tidy. Um, if it goes wrong, um, then uh, the cell and the cell can't get rid of the stuff that it has eaten. Um, then it will respond inappropriately and it starts spitting out these inflammatory molecules called cytokines that will signal to other cells nearby and recruit other cells. So in an infection, it's a really useful uh, signaling process because it tells uh, other, other nearby immune cells to come and help fight this infection. Um, but when it's just to do with keeping your body nice and tidy and clean, um, then it can often uh, lead to an inappropriate um, inflammatory response. So microglia are the macrophages of the brain. Um, so they are the professional cleaners in your brain that are doing this tidying up job all of the time. And in the brain, of course, there's a particular challenge um, because the neurons are such high maintenance cells uh, and um, they are so inclined to go wrong. Um, and bits of them, they, well, they may die completely, and of course that's what happens in Parkinson's and other neurodegenerative conditions, um, but uh, even just parts of them might go wrong, and so there may be a little bit of trimming that needs to be going on of just the, the end points, the synapses of these neurons. Um, and also, um, these uh, microglia will be responsible for clearing up any misfolded proteins that are produced by the brain, by the neurons. Um, and of course, in Parkinson's disease, that main mis misfolded protein is alpha-synuclein, which forms into fibrils that we call Lewy bodies. So there's been an increasing amount of evidence showing that the genes that are involved in these neurodegenerative diseases are often expressed not just in neurons, or not even in neurons, but in some of the other cells of the brain sometimes, and particularly in microglia. Um, and so in Alzheimer's disease, for example, quite a few of the genes that are involved in Alzheimer's disease um, have been shown to be expressed in microglia. Um, and some of them are surface receptors in these microglia, so they're, they're helping the cell to detect things that it wants to eat. 
And we also know that in Alzheimer's disease, amyloid beta, which is the misfolded protein that occurs in Alzheimer's, um, can be eaten by microglia. And so can uh, tau, which is another misfolded protein that occurs in Alzheimer's. Motor neurone disease is another one, um, another uh, neurodegenerative disease um, where some of the genes that have been shown to be implicated are expressed also in microglia. And in Parkinson's disease, we find that, uh, well, GBA, which some of you may have come across, um, is, a, is a gene whose protein product is expressed in lysosomes. And I've just already told you how important lysosomes are for degrading the contents of um, uh, macrophages and microglia when they eat stuff. Um, and uh, alpha-synuclein, the misfolded protein in Parkinson's disease, can be taken up. And I'll show you some, uh, uh, some images from our lab that we've shown that this happens. And LARC2, also a Parkinson's-related gene. Um, we've done some work in our lab to try and identify what, what it's expressed in, in microglia and macrophages. What is it doing in macrophages and microglia? Well, it turns out that it coats the surface of these phagosomes just at the point when they're about to fuse with the lysosomes. So it's obviously important in that um, digestion procedure. So, what do we think is going on in terms of neuroinflammation in Parkinson's disease? So we start off with neurons, which may or may not have a genetic predisposition um, to degenerate. They may carry some of these mutations in LARC2 or GBA or alpha-synuclein. So they may not function properly. And when they're not functioning properly, they may signal then to the microglia to come and do something about them. Microglia will be able to clear up any dead or dying neurons. But if they can't clear those effectively, if there's just a continual supply of dead material that's coming at them, then they'll, they'll not be able to cope with the load that they have to cope with. And they'll start spitting out these inflammatory molecules, cytokines. And those can in turn become damaging to the neurons. So you create a sort of vicious cycle because the neurons will then die because of that inflammation. So you get a vicious cycle of destruction. And then if on top of that, the microglia are also not quite functioning properly because they also are suffering from the mutations in those genes that are associated with Parkinson's disease, then the microglia are not functioning properly. And so again, that's going to make the, the whole situation worse. And you get an amplification of this uh, destructive cycle. So that's just what might be going on within the brain. Um, but also, there may be signals coming in from the periphery, from the outside of the brain. And there's some evidence to suggest that um, what goes on in the gut might be relevant to what's going on in the brain. Um, and that, so your gut microbiota might actually be affecting the state of inflammation of the microglia in the brain. Um, and also things such as um, sleep, which we've just been talking about. Um, microglia do most of their clearing up at night uh, when you're asleep. And so if you're not getting enough sleep, then that's going to negatively impact on their ability to do their job properly. So for all of these reasons, we want to be able to study um, what microglia are doing, and particularly when they're microglia that we've derived from Parkinson's patients. So this is where the stem cells that have been collected in OPDC come, come in play. So we can now model this neuroinflammation in a dish. So taking the skin biopsies that some of you have very kindly donated, uh, we, we reprogram them, we turn them back into being very early types of cells called stem cells, or specifically induced pluripotent stem cells, or IPS cells. Um, and once we've made those, then we can turn those cells into any type of cell that we have a recipe or protocol for. Um, and so we've spent quite a lot of time turning them into dopaminergic neurons, which are the types of neurons that um, degenerate in Parkinson's disease. And this has been the basis of Richard's work. Um, but because I'm specifically in, interested in immune cells, um, we've turned them into microglia and macrophages. Um, and so we can do this at will um, from any of the patient samples that we've collected. 
Um, and we can either turn them into just a sort of generic macrophage, um, where they're sitting in a tissue culture plastic dish, or if we culture them with those neurons that we've also made from the stem cells, then we're kind of mimicking uh, the brain environment, so they become more like microglia. So here, I have a um, time-lapse um, video, and on all of these videos, they're speeded up quite a bit. This is not real time, um, so they're usually one frame for every five minutes. Um, but what you can see, these are the generic macrophages, um, and I fed alpha-synuclein to them. So the alpha-synuclein is in green, it's fibrils, it's little clumps of alpha-synuclein, the misfolded protein Parkinson's. And um, what you can see is that the macrophages um, are very interested in the alpha-synuclein, um, and they're going around trying to eat it. So this cell in particular, um, it's about to eat this fibril. There it goes in there, okay? Um, now, there's something else very interesting happening in this video, which is here, that cell just died because it had eaten too much alpha-synuclein, and it's immediately consumed by the surrounding cells. So there it, they are doing their normal, you know, keeping everything tidy job. So we know that the cells that we make are perfectly competent at this phagocytosis. Um, now we can model them with the neurons um, by co-culturing these macrophages with the neurons and they become more like microglia, like the cells in your brain. Um, and we think that the contacts between the microglia and the neurons are really Im important. There's a lot of crosstalk going on between these cells. So this is quite a, a sophisticated model, but it's uh, going to enable us to um, reveal quite a lot about the biology of these cells. So here we are. Um, this is another time-lapse video, and in this case we can see there's a bed of neurons which are just kind of grey. Um, and the, the microglia are now in red. Um, and so you can see that they're roughly just kind of moving around. Um, in a, each one seems to have its own territory. So they're surveying their local environment. They have a sort of area of neurons that they keep a check on, and they're constantly checking those neurons to see if they're OK. This is just one of those cells. Now, you can't see the neurons that it's sitting on because I'm only just concentrating on this one cell, um, this microglia, that you can see now I've uh, taken it at a one frame every 12 seconds. So this is to show you just how much they are moving. Every 12 seconds, their finger-like projections, or ramifications as we call them, are changing all of the time as they're surveying the neuronal environment that they're in. So they're really highly active cells. In this um, time lapse, on the left hand side, you can see uh, just the control, uh, normal behavior of these microglia. On the right hand side, I've added an inflammatory signal, which is a bacterial component called LPS. Um, and when we do that, you can see that the cells, the microglia start to cluster together. They're getting angry and they stop having these long ramifications. They start balling up into what we call an amoeboid state. And it's in this state that they will start to spit out those nasty cytokine chemicals um, that may be inappropriate. Then finally, um, in this video, you can see that uh, so I've got the neurons are now red, and they're in sort of clusters um, with uh, neurites running between the clusters, and the microglia are in green. This one, if you watch this one closely, and I'll run, let it run through its sequence again, um, it's really interested in what's going on in this neuronal cluster. Here it starts again. It was really interested in something that was in there, kept revisiting that area, and then eventually you could see a phagocytic sort of cup or donut form as it ate um, a cell or a bit of debris in that um, area. And so that means that we're able to uh, model all of these inflammatory processes um, and phagocytic processes that we're interested in understanding um, in a dish. So to, to summarize, um, I've shown you that we can make these cells from your skin cells. We can study neuroinflammation in a dish. 
these microglia, they busy surveying their territories. They respond to inflammatory signals um, in the way that we would expect. They're capable of phagocytosing either alpha synuclein or uh, dead and dying cells. Um, and this means that we're now able to um, try and understand these processes better and then look for targets that will be uh, appropriate for doing drug screens on. The, the difficulty is going to be that, of course, we want these cells to still be functional because they need to be clearing up the, the bad stuff. They, we don't want them to clear up the inappropriately um, live cells. So it's a very, very delicate balance. So we have to really finely tune um, the, uh, the targets that we're looking at to find ones that are going to enable the cells to be able to eat up excess alpha-synuclein, for example, and eat up dead neurons, but not to attack any cells that could still be functional. Um, and above all, we want to avoid inflammatory processes to, to occur. So we don't want um, them to start triggering those uh, release of inflammatory um, molecules. So the, um, the study that Michelle is uh, undertaking with um, alpha-synuclein antibodies against alpha-synuclein um, is an incredibly good example of this because um, the antibodies that have been developed by this company, Biogen, um, are going to help the microglia um, to take up alpha-synuclein. The antibodies will bind to the alpha-synuclein, and the microglia can uh, detect the antibodies, um, the other end of the antibodies, and then that will help them to phagocytose those alpha-synuclein uh, um, fibrils um, or oligomers and take them up and be able to hopefully digest them better. So it's all about trying to help these microglia to do their job better. Um, and so finally we come back to my uh, son in his bedroom um, and um, he's the neuron, the highly functioning, uh, you know, highly energy consuming uh, neuron who, you know, when properly taken care of, can do amazing things, um, but sadly produces a lot of excess rubbish that he's not really capable of getting rid of himself. And so I'm the microglia. I have to go <laughs> along and tidy up, clear up all of the rubbish that is left all over the floor. I have to make sure, though, that I don't clear up his A-level notes, because that would be a disaster. <laughs> so I mustn't clear up the good, the, you know, the good, useful stuff, only the bad stuff that will help him to be a proper, fully functional human being. So on that note, thank you to all of you for listening. Um, and to those of you who've given skin biopsies in particular, um, and to all of the people who've helped with this research. Thank you very much.